So as we continue with our digital inking, it's important to save your work so that if it seizes up, you don't lose your progress. And because we've set it up in different layers, it's important to save it as a PSD. So I'll remind you when using PhotoP, when you first save a project, it's, it's always going to go to downloads. And it's going to be named whatever you saved it as. So I'm going to change the name here. This is Assignment 7 Line Art. And then I'm going to take that Assignment 7 Line Art that's in my downloads, and I'm going to move it into my Assignment folder. All right, make sure I can find it. This is my working format, the one that supports all the different layers. I mark that as green. It's easy to find. Then I'm going to close it here out of PhotoP, and then I'm going to open it from my computer in the Assignment 7 folder. And that way, when I hit Save from now on, or just Command S on my Mac, it will just update. So I just have to hit Save, and it will update that PSD file instead of always um, downloading a copy into my downloads folder. Okay, so now that that's set up, more digital inking. I want to give each of these teeth some dimension. And I'm not going for purely technical lines, right? So I don't mind if it gets a little bit thicker in some places. But I do mind if my computer kind of slows down. So I'm trying not to go too fast so that my cursor can kind of stay with me. But you'll notice I'm always a little bit ahead of it. And that's the advantage of programs like that you download, like Photoshop or Procreate or GIMP or Paint Tool Sci or any of the kind of raster illustration programs that are useful. Is that if it's downloaded on your computer, there's a lot less processing lag when working at full resolution. So I'm going to do that illustration trick of darkening in the V of the teeth. Get these upper teeth on this kind of mortality skull. And this is not a logo. I want it to look good, but I don't need it to look absolutely resolved everywhere. So I try to keep myself from zooming in too much. So I'm zoomed in at 300% now. I will try to never zoom in more than that because that, that means I'm being a little too persnickety about the end product and what it's designed for which is a spot illustration for stickers, for t-shirts, for that kind of thing at 9 by 12 at 300 pixels per inch. It's going to look good at those for those uses. Okay. And most of the time I want to be viewing it at 100%, you know, and just inking it as it will be seen using the pixels of the screen as my real pixels. Because the skull is cracked here, I don't mind a little bit of wobbly variation. So I'm only, only correcting it where I need to. Here, I think it might be nice to have a little bit more thickness on one side of the line. So I might 
ink over it right there. And then I can take advantage of the eraser and customize some of the thickness here as the crack is winding back. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time in our line art here. But the finished product is not the line art. The finished product is a fully colored spot illustration. So color is going to be a, play a big role in finishing this off as well. And to help the coloring, I'm trying to really contain each shape. So for instance, just really quick example, if I want to color the heart red, it's a simple matter of just dropping in a contained shape. Whereas if, if it's not contained, then I'm not going to be able to, to do that as well. This little icon here is the defaults that will get you back to solid black as your foreground color. Doing this with a trackpad reminds me of why I just demoed a, uh, a skull and a dagger last semester, because <laughs> it takes a while. And I'm sure yours will take a while to do as well with whatever materials you have. So just patience is key. Digital inking, like traditional inking, I find can be very meditative. You're just trying to kind of slow your yourself down, make a lot of kind of smooth strokes. And digital inking is less stressful because you can always erase and redo in ways that you can't with traditional India ink on paper. So I try to follow consistent arcs in the work and then let them overlap. And where it gets a little trickier is when that, that curve takes a big change. This will be tricky going underneath with the trackpad. So sometimes I have to split a curve into a few steps like that and then Connect it, and then you can clean it up with your eraser. So it's kind of take the angle on your line that is most comfortable. Sometimes that's bottom to top. Sometimes it's left to right. Remember, you can always just let go and then start a line again from a different point. You can see how important the sketch is here because kind of out of context, I'm just trying to flesh it out. I'm not even really knowing where I am in the whole of the sketch. If you want to see, you can go to Window and click on Navigator. And that's a tool. I might nest it over here if I can. Hmm. Let me let you put you over here. But what Navigator does is it, it shows you where you are in your illustration. And it's very helpful in digital painting. It might be helpful to you here. 
So I'll just click on that when I'm curious. And it's kind of surprising once you're doing it to realize that digital inking isn't that much faster than traditional inking, if it is faster at all. I mean, I'm just saving time on having to to load a brush with ink. But if you compare it to using like a, a felt tip brush pen or a marker, this just has the advantage of being able to correct mistakes like I just made, which in inking you have to use whiteout or, or just uh, work with it. Here I actually have the eraser. But it does take some time. Especially when you're new to it, digital inking can take a lot longer. And so another valid approach that I've had students use is to actually ink their drawing by hand, you know, just with tracing paper over their pencil. And then we scan their inked drawing in. And then we take their inked scanned drawing into Illustrator and live trace it into a clean vector, which will look kind of like this, but even smoother. And so I'll be showing you that once I finish my digital inking, how I can turn it into a vector after the fact. Because those of you with Illustrator, you want to know about that capability in Illustrator. It's a capability that the online vector program doesn't have. to draw some more funky teeth. The other thing you realize when you're inking over your pencils or your digital sketch even, is that you have to make decisions about the inside and outside of the lines. Like what did you actually intend? So do you want them to go thinner or do you want them to go thicker? Like these teeth, what kind of size do I actually want them to be? What shapes do I want the insides to make? So you're really controlling the inside and the outside of your lines. And you might decide against something that you sketched and try to digitally ink it a slightly different way because you think it would be better. So you can take advantage of opportunities there. You want to avoid tangencies in your design. That's the uncomfortable overlapping or touching of elements. So I had that example right here with how I inked this. I didn't want it touching. So I just did my digital inking a little bit lower. You can always decide if you want to thicken certain lines, like for the lower jaw here. How smooth you want them, it's all up to you. 